Hey, hey, greetings, my people from the Great Start Studio, where I ask the question, how good do you want to be? As you all know, I'm on the search for my people. If you're my people, you're people of discipline, you're people of nuances, you're people of details, your details of overall philosophies of being able to be the most healthy, people of being the most healthy in terms of efficiency, those are my people. If you're attracted to any of these things that I'm speaking about, then you're my people. Hit subscribe, like on the channel, it really helps. So let me bring this to you. I've got these drumstick illustrations. There's a whole playlist. Well, there's gonna be about 30 of them, and you could just watch one every day and get these parameters of, of the space that we're trying to be in this healthy, efficient sort of learning. Uh, today, I'm gonna to talk to you about the one end, improvisation, and the other end is composition. Improvisation and composition. Now, improvisation is the kind of thing where you just sit down and you just play whatever comes into your mind. There's no plan. You're basically kind of playing at random, except it's a controlled random. It's not really chaos. It's just that you're making choices in the moment. There's a bunch of ways to practice this. You could sit and just play freely, improvise notes. You could just do that for 15 minutes and go, I'm just going to play freely for 15 minutes. I have no idea what I'm going to start with, no idea what I'm going to end with. I'm just gonna see where it takes me. A great thing to do would be to record those things. Record yourself improvising, and then you'll kind of see if you fall into these kind of patterns or if it was just blathering, there wasn't any story that you were telling and you'll get better at improvising. You'll just get better at it. Now that's in the research lab of practice. You can control that in a bunch of different ways. You can set a metronome and just practice in certain tempos and see how many different ways that you can play in that just at random, no plan. And then you could do that with pre-recorded music. You could just take songs People do this all the time. They'll take a song and then they'll just improvise over the song. They're not really playing what the guy played on the record. They're really just playing what they feel like in the moment. They might be using that as sort of a guide, but you're really just playing off of those kinds of feels that are in the song. You can be playing completely against it. A song is really like a glorified metronome. On the compositional side of playing things that are basically written out, at least written out, worked out in your mind. Now they may not be written out on the page, but they are still written out inside of you. You know exactly what you want to do in this verse. You know what you want to do in that verse. You want to do in this verse. I always think of like Neil from Rush. Whatever he chose in that moment when they recorded, by the time they recorded, those notes that he chose, that was the composition for him. And so that composition was the composition that he had to be true to 10 years, 20 years, 30 years later, when he's playing the same song, even if he had different ideas now about what that song should be, for the most part, he stuck to all of those parts that were in that song from the beginning. He made those choices. That's the choice of the song back then. He stuck to those choices. That's a composition. Now, whether he wrote it out or not, you could have written out a chart and played it, and it would still have the same effect you just know exactly what it is. I don't know if you remember that Guitar Center had the drum off competitions, went on for, uh, it's like two decades or something it felt like. I was a part of a ton of those. Uh, I was terrified of doing solos. I just went, well, I'm just gonna start doing these every year. I'm just gonna force myself into this very uncomfortable sort of form, playing on somebody else's drums, playing in a room, you only get one shot. Uh, there's a whole room full of drummers and judges and it's about as uncomfortable as it could possibly be. I would just start jumping into that. This is back when there were five minutes. I started creating a solo that was worked out from top to bottom for five minutes. You can go and check out, a friend of mine shot one uh, around 2000, 2001. That's one of the few that I actually have video of. Every time I would do it, it was a learning event. I was just trying to stretch, seeing what kind of different ideas I could compose and play under pressure. Now I've done shows over here, uh, a thousand, two thousand shows. We're hosting jam nights in every kind of possible configuration. And that's where the host band plays a set. We're just playing freely, whatever we wanna play. Then other people come up and if it's a drummer, then I get them in there and there might be a couple of the, the, the key guys in the band or not. And everybody works out kind of what they wanna play on the scene. A lot of the key disciplines in the song, the key details, those, those kind of get washed aside. Everybody's just playing basically for fun. Sometimes it's their first time. Sometimes they're, 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 you know, they're amateur players. And sometimes great players come out and they just want to play as well and we all get up there and play. It's very improv 
improvisational. It was for us. Anytime we were playing, you, we had no idea where we were going to take a song in the moment, how many solos we were going <laughs> to... It just became this anything goes sort of thing. And you get really comfortable in that world once you start letting go of the composition. These two worlds, though, are polar opposites in a way. One is completely without rules, without any kind of predetermination of what the notes or the phrases are going to be, how you're going to start, how you're going to end. And over here, it's completely composed, 100% composed. And then what happens is you practice one until it becomes more and more composed. There's more parts. Some, some bands you play with, half of the parts are kind of worked out and the rest are you kind of free to as long as you play the signature parts. Composition wise, you can practice composition. You just go, I'm going to, I'm going to create something that's one minute long and I'm going to make it note for note and see if I can just do it over and over and remember it, get it in, in the muscle memory and make choices and go, well, I like this note. I like this note better than that note. And you try different notes and then you compose something. It's not the first thing you do. It's the last thing you do. You might have rewritten this thing a thousand times and you're like, now this is the composition that I'm the happiest with now. I've tried these different variations of notes and details. So there's nothing on the fly over here. You could create something that's compositional and then take a section and say, this is going to be improvisational in this section and just see what happens in the guardrails of the composition. So there's a lot of different ways of approaching this. You want to be a full spectrum person where you're comfortable in both of these worlds at any degree and just start completely improvisational and become more and more compositional until it's 100% compositional. Then you're ready for any kind of band. There's every kind of band out there in every kind of musical situation. If you're only comfortable kind of winging it, you won't be able to play in bands that are compositional. The, the bands that are compositional need it to be a very particular way. When I lived in Nashville, uh, we hired a uh, session guitar player. I'd never met him, and he was the kind of guy who played in like a million different bands, studio guy, he played every kind of thing. He had all of his sounds dialed up. He was the other guy in the band that would kind of come to a 95% note prediction. You knew exactly what he was going to do at any kind of part, and then you could compose your part to that so that our parts were working in complete harmony together all the time. I love that. I just loved working with him. As a player, he was fantastic, very, very solid, made it very easy for everyone to know exactly what we're going to do. That was the nature of that band. What you want to do is get comfortable in these worlds until they become one thing. You do that by practicing in the research lab at home. You do it by do by working it out on the page in your compositional form. You do it by memorizing sections. You do it by playing over pre-recorded music. You do it by stepping into situations that are completely improvisational and completely compositional, and you will get comfortable in every one of these in every one of these forms. That's what the series is all about. It walks down all the 32 groove types, and then the ornamentation, and then the fills, and then you're basically working out a whole compositional form so that you know, you know, working out all the problems left to right across the drum set. That's every problem on the drum set is left to right. It's never up and down because we're you know we're bipeds, and so but side to side is always a problem when you're playing open hand and you're playing left on the hi-hat and then you're playing right on the ride cymbal, you get to work out the 100% possibilities instead of just 25. So 25% of the possibilities are only leading with one hand. And then the other 25 is leading with the other hand. And then there's 50% of the combinations where you're switching hands in the same groove. If you're only playing one side of the kit uh, with one hand, you're leaving 75% of the possibilities of the drum set completely off. Now, there's a lot of possibilities, but you, I don't want to leave those out. I want to experience as many of these as I can. So I'm trying to make these short, as you know, and uh, I would just go back down the playlist and watch all those. There's so much great content. This is one of them. This is one of the parameters that we're talking about to be in this healthy space, improvisational to compositional. Hey, I, I got to wrap this up. So, from my place here, the Great Start Studio, I'm back at it.